Uh, I'm Pasang Dolma Sherpa. I work with the Nepal Federation of Indigenous Nationalities. It's called NEFIN in Nepal. And it works with the indigenous peoples for the issues and challenges with the human rights approach for, uh, for uh, bringing indigenous peoples' uh, voice to be heard in the policies and programs in relation to climate change and other aspects that has an uh, impact on the indigenous peoples' livelihoods in Nepal. Um, are you already seeing effects of climate change in Nepal? Yeah, Nepal, has a, Nepal is one of the mountainous countries and we can feel it, you know, the impact of climate change severely in the Nepal, especially in the mountain area, indigenous peoples in the mountain area because of the melting ice, because of the brusting, state of brusting of the so many merging, new merging lakes. So it has a really, really negative impact, uh, especially a more heat um, and uh, it has a grow, grow, the impact of the severe impact of climate change is seen in Nepal especially with the people uh, living in the mountain, uh, mountain, uh, mountainous area in Nepal. How do you think um, it helps to uh, monitor the climate change? Because surely uh, people need a lot of help and funding. Uh, shouldn't that money go towards helping them rather than you know, monitoring what's already happening? Yeah, uh, I mean, impact of climate change is there, uh, and then the, now what happens in the you know um, to address the impact of climate change, we have been working the government of Nepal and even in the international field working on the adaptation mitigation different approaches and even the MRV, but it is very important the uh, recognition of the role of indigenous peoples and the local communities on the ground monitoring the aspects of climate change in relation to the you know in their territories in the forests and instead of biodiversity the changing patterns of the climate change no, and, and uh, it is very very important to have a sustainability of monitoring to address the impact of climate change and, uh, and uh, concerning for improving their livelihoods on the ground level and this uh, I mean if we just only have the national level international levels um, you know developing the policy programs only from the top-down approach and it will be never have a, um, a sustainable solution. And what can indigenous people in Nepal do towards helping cut emissions, um, for example, could they have cleaner coal stoves? Well, in, in Nepal, we are, we are in the indigenous peoples in the, on the ground, especially working with this uh, climate change mitigations, uh, uh, you know, uh, the um, red program also, and also with the adaptation program, and then the, and the government of Nepal forming different uh, uh, policies and program. And then now uh, we, ha we have been advocating to the government that it is very, very need of uh, addressing the, um, uh, you know, the indigenous people livelihoods that has been impacted from the climate change and recognition of the traditional knowledge and forest management and played by the customary practices uh, for the sustainable of the uh, forest management and biodiversity and the sustainable livelihoods of the indigenous peoples on the ground and this need to be addressed uh, in the in the policies program and role and responsibility played by the indigenous peoples. Uh, I understand that there has been progress on forests at these talks. Um, do you think that there's been progress um, in that area? Yes, there has been some progress here, uh, no doubt, but it's still like uh, how the safeguard will be issues, uh, Cancun safeguards will be implemented on the ground. It's a big challenge. And also the issues of the drivers of deforestation, um, uh, it, it, it to be clarified, uh, um, you know, um, clarified the definitions here in um, Warsaw. And also uh, like uh, uh, the uh, engagement of indigenous peoples and local communities on the ground, uh, their role uh, for monitoring um, uh, you know, biodiversity, uh, for the uh, for the patterns of the uh, you know uh, seasonal patterns and then patterns of the crops and uh, rainfall patterns and you know different uh, uh, movement mechanism in the climate change need to be uh, it, it to be seen and that need to be addressed uh, the, uh, the especially the role and the, especially their contributions and the knowledge systems uh, it to be um, uh, you know it to be addressed and recognized uh, from this uh, negotiation and for the sustainable solution of the climate change for both for mitigation and adaptation. What about uh, loss and damage? Um, do you think that, um, that all the things you've been talking about, about monitoring mm -hmm. and uh, um, adapting could be um, included in any loss and damage mechanism. Yeah, loss and damage text is not really been improved here uh, because uh, when we see like an impact of climate change, the loss and damage is more in the developing country, especially with the indigenous peoples uh, in the area because most of the indigenous peoples are forest uh, dependent communities. And then the, when the impact of climate change and brought to the uh, loss and damage of their, um, uh, their um, area, and that has uh, both consequences 
one is their surrounding area, but at the same time, their, their identity, their existence, and their uh, uh, spiritual and the symbiotic relation with the forests and their territories and their surrounding environment. So loss and damage need to be really addressed, uh, you know, um, why it is important, especially to address the issues and concerns of indigenous peoples in the developing countries, because they are the ones who are being victimized uh, from the impact of climate change, uh, both in the surrounding and also on their existence, on their livelihoods, on their identity, because they have been one uh, playing a really great role for adaptation and mitigation.